Welcome to Oh Brother, a podcast of three brothers trying to figure it all out, with your hosts Brandon, Colin, and Aaron. On this week's show, Spilled Science. You, why are you whispering? What is that? Why are you whispering? Am I whispering? Yeah, I think you're whispering. Mother trucker. How about now? <laughs> Not again. <laughs> bueno. No bueno. What? No, you're fine. You're fine. Okay, so what if I do it now? Is that better? You're fine. You're fine. I was just yeah. being silly. Uh, uh, uh. I'm so funny. I'm so funny. Okay. Um, Sorry, we're kind of in the chaotic phase of cleaning and packing because we're going to move this weekend. Fun! Uh, and then I I just got my little corner on my bed here uh, where I'm also going to be doing some typing uh, for some cases because I'm a little, a little bit, not really behind, but I just kind of want to get, I got a lot on my plate and I'm going to do some typing as sure. well. Fun, Hello. exciting. I hope so. Hello. Hello. Is that Brandon? Uh, yes. It's yeah, not it's some it. random nefarious individual. Mm. It's just me. Ah. A nefarious individual. Right. A known <laughs> nefarious individual. A known nefarious, <laughs> nefarious individual. <laughs> yes. Uh. A known quantity of nefarity. It is. Not here. Awesome. Um, is this an uh, ASMR paper wrestling episode? Is that what's happening? No, I think okay. so. I'll, <laughs> think so. Welcome, welcome. For thank you for joining. I'll, I'll, I'll take a picture of what's of what is transpiring right. in my in your life at the moment. I heard you say you're working too, so no worries. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, yeah. That didn't sound good. That was a horrible noise. <laughs> We've each brought different caliper of paper. Um, I'm really looking forward to... Yeah, uh, here's, mine. <laughs> here's mine. Here we go. Ooh, we could start with a napkin. That'd be fun. There you go. <laughs> I have a napkin. <clears throat> I have like, at my little work area here. Yeah. I just have a stash of fast food napkins. Like anytime we order, like takeout or whatever. I just think, you know, sometimes they give you like a million and other times they yeah. give you zero. <laughs> so I just have uh, all the extra ones I just have in this little pile right here in the corner, just in case. Just in case you need them. <laughs> right, for emergencies. Napkin Sometimes you have a snack and you're like, uh-oh, I have made a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Things have gone wrong. <laughs> I now have a napkin. Ta-da. <laughs> or other times you're eating some takeout uh, from like, you know, whatever. And you're like, they have given me a napkin. <laughs> <laughs> this is clearly not going to be sufficient for the job at hand. So, yeah, uh, backup napkins. Go. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 one of the piece of advice is one of the one of the piece pieces of advice I got. No, I, I like got, piece of advices. That's better. Piece of advices. That sounds yeah. like something Noah would say. Um, instead of saying he's still hungry, <laughs> he's. He says, Daddy, I am still more hungry. <laughs> still more hey. And I go He's just wanting you to know that he's like super hungry. I'm still more hungry. Right. I go, oh so I don't correct him because it's cute. Anyway, um, yeah. fair. One of the That's fair <laughs> pieces of advice that I got for being as a parent was like, Yeah, you know how you used to hoard those napkins from places? Now you're gonna do it on like 10x mode because you will never have enough. You th- you thought you were always on short of napkins. Now just imagine. <laughs> That's true. You have well, time here. I have so that. some in the end table in the living room. I have some in the car in like the glove box or whatever. Yeah. Never know when you're going to make a mess. Especially if you're me because that time is just at any moment. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> it could be just any time. Here it is. Bam. <laughs> is it right now? Yes. 
<laughs> yes, maybe it is. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. We had that today. We, so we spilled some science. Uh oh. Uh oh. Spilled science. Daisy. Spilled science. Like what? Spilled science. <clears throat> uh, it was some water with the Skittle dissolving in it. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. <clears throat> so it's kind of our like. My first little twenty like unit is about just like the first couple of weeks, like getting used to science class. And there's just a few little experiments at the end. Nothing very exciting yet. But uh, <clears throat> excuse me. We did the like we we're talking about like like questioning and drawing conclusions. That's our big focus, mm-hmm. right? With a little dab of like which variable is which one and what's a hypothesis kind of that you know methodology in there <clears throat> but today was a uh, dissolving skittles in water like hot versus cold basically like what's your hypothesis and con- writing a good conclusion that has your data in it <clears throat> you know so we did i microed a bunch of water and i had one cup that was hot and one that was cold and they just dropped their skittles and they had to time it nice. done not the most exciting experiment but it has lots of good points <clears throat> and uh you know to pass the time a lot of them took like pictures or short videos of their experiment happening for our like observation practice right so <laughs> we could engage that way so it's not bad <clears throat> average time in hot water yeah uh, anytime anywhere between Mm-hmm. 10 to 15 minutes right depending on the water temperature right some classes the water got a little bit hotter right but we're talking like 160 ish degree water fahrenheit this is fahrenheit international listeners sorry uh, <laughs> we, need to, we need to alienate everyone else yeah 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 uh, so I wrote down the Celsius t- today too to show, but I forgot what it was. Okay. Uh, let's Fine. see. I need to divide by two, right? No, I subtract 30, right? And divide by two. So that gives me, what, 60 degrees Celsius, right? Something like that. <laughs> Very hot. Uh, That's hot. Maybe like 50 degrees Celsius. 60 might be a little high. But yeah, we did that. We Luckily, we only spilled our cold science. So that's good. We avoided the... <laughs> It's a little safer, I guess. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> Luckily, we only spilled the the cold cup, but yeah, only one. Not bad. So unscathed the rest of the way around. Very, That's it. Right. Tomorrow is a quiz day, like end of unit quiz. It's a real short unit, so it's a real short quiz. And then we move on to something new <clears throat> and exciting. Woohoo! But the big experiment that they really like is we do the penny one. Uh, not the traditional penny of uh, that you might be familiar with of the how many drops of water fit on a penny for yeah. surface tension, right? <clears throat> oh, no. This one's better. <clears throat> this is, can you tell the age of a penny based on the sound? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, before... Pre- Pennies made pre-1982 are 98% copper. Yeah. Pennies made post-1982 are something like 97% zinc. Right. Yeah. So, actually, there is a dramatic difference in sound. (laughs) Yeah. When you bounce them off the table. So, we do it blindfolded, right? Good. We do some testing hear it and then they have to close their eyes and they their partner drops it and they have to listen for it so it's pretty fun they really liked it they were really surprised that it sounded different uh but again the results on that one are really interesting because the kids either get like four right or nine that's kind of like <laughs> that's like <laughs> It's really weird. There's very yeah. few kids get like six, five or six. Interesting. Right? Yeah. It's either like you get four right or you get greater than seven. Like that's right. 
That's a, yeah, that isn't that's an interesting distribution. It's really yeah. weird. Like almost nobody gets like fire sticks. Huh. They either like nail it or they miss them all. It's like what? <laughs> that's so weird. <laughs> What is happening? Either the room is just too loud, maybe that can sure. happen. They but like, throw it that's one variable. The na- your neighbors sound like that's the. <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes they get mixed up in the test. Like they mix up which pennies the old one, which is the new one. So they might be starting with faulty, like sensory mm-hmm. assumptions. But mm-hmm. it is really funny how it's like they're either like really good or. That's- <laughs> Not, not so, so much, good. Not so much, right? It's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but but I don't care about what they got. The, the, the only important part I tell them is the conclusion, right? Mm-hmm. Can, <clears throat> can you? Can you? Mm-hmm. Yes or no? Tell me, you have data now. Tell I don't me. care that you couldn't do it. Tell me no because, and then reference your trial. That's all uh-huh. I want. Done. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, but that's not the fun part of science. <clears throat> No, no, oh, yes, being right and shoving it in everyone's face. That's definitely the, the part. That's everyone's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of our quizzes. It's like, good scientists. Uh, it was like, what do you do if you get the answer you don't want? And one of the, <laughs> one of the possible choices was lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> there you go. They're like, no, not that one. Like, that's right. That's right. We don't care. <clears throat> Especially in sixth grade science, we literally don't care if we're wrong. Great. We love being wrong. <laughs> yeah. There's a life lesson in here. Follow Sneaking it in. Shh. <laughs> yeah, don't don't tell them they're also learning don't something else. Don't Shh. tell them. He's okay. But we're we're right. We like being wrong. We learn something new. <laughs> but they do freak out, right? Sixth grade where they start freaking out about stuff. And like Oh my gosh, I don't know what this is. Mm-hmm. So I try to tell them sometimes, like, is it okay if you don't know all these answers? Yes. Yeah. Because we just started this yeah. yesterday. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I don't, I don't expect you to oh. know everything right now. Oh my gosh. It's like, if you already knew all of it, I wouldn't bother telling you this. <laughs> we Go could just home. do something else. Oh my gosh. But, you know, but you, I, I know, even I struggle with that. To this day, right, where I go to some place to learn and I don't either immediately know most of the answers or I don't immediately get it, I, I get turned off from that and I start having a bad time. Like, I, I have to, that's a fight that I have to do. An example of that was actually yesterday. We tried to uh, <clears throat> complete uh, canoe training. That was rained out because oh, of the yeah. flood. Oh, yeah. A thousand years ago. <laughs> yeah, last year. Yeah. In, in the before times. We in the bo- on, yes, the before times. <laughs> we were down on the current <laughs> When it river. was just rainy only. <laughs> right. That was the only thing we worried about. Uh, where we were down on the current river and it got rained out because the water came up like eight feet or whatever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so right. They, and there was a dude who was like, it's only eight feet. It's fine. I float on the- yeah, and we were like, go uh, away. Yeah, yes. no thanks. So anyway, they rescheduled that. Listeners, this is a callback to a very old episode. Very so old episode. So, yeah. <laughs> One of our, I think the first uh, remote recording episode, if I remember correctly. It was. Right. Yeah. All right, you were in the uh, president's uh, name. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, uh, I don't remember. Uh, Van Buren. Van Buren, yes, there you go. I wanted to I say like, Zachary Taylor for some reason. I was like, I was that's saying, not right. <laughs> my brain was saying Jackson. I was like, Jack- no, not Jackson. <laughs> It was the other guy. Anyway, so they scheduled it for yesterday. Little Martin. At, on, <laughs> swing it a bit. Uh, at, on, the, on the Niangua. And so Ooh. we were down by the, I don't, I don't know if you remember where the, the NRO take out and put in is. Uh, uh, we, that's a negative we, there. <laughs> it's fine. I did. I don't. I did. <laughs> anyway, we were okay. way upstream of that. And we showed up. And remember, this is the only interaction I have with this group of people is from this thing. And we show up yeah. and they're like, we're going to do a little bit of an intro and then we're going to hand around a bag, take one piece of paper out. Written on that is a skill that you have to teach the rest of us. Ooh, jigsaw. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Very, <laughs> and so. It's the official teacher term for that. as jigsaw. Yeah. <laughs> Very creepy. I didn't. I don't think I needed to know that. <laughs> and like jigsaw puzzle, not uh-huh. jigsaw like saw. Like uh-huh, sure, you have sure. until one o'clock or whatever. Right. Right. That movie's sure. dumb. Sorry, sure. it is. Dumb. Hate me. Yeah. Sorry, 
I hate that movie. <laughs> it's one of Megan's favorites. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Megan. It's fine. Uh, and so my first, my gut reaction to that was, A, I don't want to do that because that's stupid. Um, just teach me, show me again. And then B, it was, what if I don't know the skill that they asked me to teach? Exactly. Or, right? You what have if, to learn it and practice it. You have to learn and practice it. So it was like, what if I don't know? And they handed me something and it was like cargo storage and carrying. And I was like, well, this means <laughs> you just throw it in there. This means something to me, but what does it mean to <laughs> you? <laughs> so I cornered one of the people and I was like, so I have this thing. This is what I think it means. Is that what you want? And they were like, no, no, we're not talking about storing things in the canoe. And I was like, what? Why wouldn't, what? No. They were like, we just want you to show how to carry it, carry a canoe with two or more people or by yourself. And that's then called portaging portaging and the word then, you're looking for yeah. is portage, portage. or portage if you just Porta- feeling portage. feeling oh. french that day oh. you know <laughs> <laughs> right uh, and then they wanted me to show how to tie it on a canoe trailer and i was like oh okay but for that first brief moment where i didn't understand the instructions in front of me i was <laughs> i was majorly <laughs> panicking well i mean that is fair because those are rubbish instructions right right? cargo and storage i get i would think like how do i balance my junk in the canoe so i don't tip it over yeah right great how do i distribute things you know left and right versus forward and backwards i mean fore and aft sorry boat people you're just sending everybody after us i am i'm getting i'm sorry gosh (laughs) port and starboard there you go correct (laughs) Literally all the people. I know. All the boating enthusiasts oh, that listen to our show. show. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it was a great it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, they were like, We've got three takeouts that we can hit. One's a mile and a half, one's five, one's eight miles down no, the river. Eight miles go. Well, the thing Paddle, was is that baby. we had a huge storm like barreling towards nope, us. Not yet. Motivation <laughs> for paddling. They were, like, they were like, we are going to get on the water and we'll get. Thankfully, um, at the, the one at the mile and a half takeout, we kind of pulled together just to make sure everyone was with us and we we're doing some skills. And this um, uh, MDC agent was standing on the bank, like staring at us. And he was like, Hey guys, <laughs> and we were like, "Hi, <laughs> we're one of you," and uh, <laughs> we're with you. We're with you. <laughs> Shh. Uh, and he was like, you know, came over and he was like, "Where are you guys headed?" And our leader was like, "Oh, it's another like seven miles." And he was like, "You're not making that." <laughs> and he pulled up the radar, and it was like forty-five minutes away. And we're, like, we're going no. here. We're going right here. <laughs> this Nailed is it. where we were going. So yeah, so we pulled out, and it was. <laughs> By the time we got everything up loaded got people vanned around and made it back to the original parking space it was dumping mm. water on us so rain is fine was it lightning well there was thunder and so the rule is oh, if it yeah, thunders you get off the water for 30 minutes and you yeah, win yeah yeah so nah, nah, nah. so well because i mean that technically means there's lightning somewhere, somewhere right uh, yeah so <laughs> but yeah that is a good point because like i you have to be cognizant of that, the direction giving. You have to remember that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. your directions might only make sense to you. Right. Right. So I make sure to tell my kids all the time, too, like, listen, listen, <clears throat> I told them the first day of school, I have a problem. Sometimes I'm saying words and I know what I mean. <laughs> that doesn't mean that you're going to know what I'm talking about. So at any point when we're talking about stuff, if your response is, what the heck are you saying, Mr. Funkhauser? Then let, just raise your hand. Be like, uh, yo, what? And then we'll back up from there. Because I do that. I get unrolled and I get excited and I'll say words. <laughs> and like, you can watch their faces sometimes. Half of them will just be like, uh, what? <laughs> Right. Yeah. Or I did that last year. I typed up this big thing. I was like, oh, yeah, here's my directions. Here we go. And they all got it and went, uh, <laughs> what the heck is this? <clears throat> so we had a do over. I retyped them mm-hmm. <laughs> with their input. I was like, how can we fix this? Hey. Uh, <laughs> Ta da. <laughs> 
But it's just, I think it's important that you know, to just like, it's the other way around. Like, you've got to be open to knowing, like, some people aren't going to know what the heck you're talking about. And you mm-hmm. have to be open to listening to that and going, oh, okay, let's try this instead. Because my directions are bad. Like, I told them, like, I told my kids sometimes. Sometimes I give bad directions. But it's just because I think about things a different way sometimes. and. It might not be the same way you do it. So mm-hmm. you just got to tell me if you get confused. That's right. all. Just, yeah, this, and no, this whole like couple of weeks of school, we've just been practicing the secret signal. Right. right? <laughs> like, like if only I tell them really metal dramatically today, I was like, oh, if only there was a way to ask for my teacher's help. Oh, right. <laughs> there must be some signal I could give. Some way to know. Because <laughs> some of them, they're like, I don't know what to do. And they'll just like sit there. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. this this group of kids, not quite so much last year, they would just be like, well, I don't know. And Better quit. There. Like, <laughs> right. But that is a real attitude. Like, that is, even, even in some adults, people who are just like, well, I don't understand. So, <clears throat> meh. And yeah, so just, I quit go off and do their thing and you're like you know you could ask right like that's, yeah that's, that's well that's i like, mean let's be real let's think about when we went to school okay i do this very intentionally because there were experiences when i was in school where that was the only option like my teacher wasn't going to help me right, well, right i had so. teachers like that we all have had teachers that like were kind of garbage you know, and they, they would just be like, be like, I'll get this. And they're like, try it again. Like, try again. Oh, right. cool. Thanks. <laughs> That's so helpful. Or my personal favorite. I could uh, totally do algebra like that. Just, I'll just get it next time. How, just, did, how did I know? I just stare at this piece of paper harder. <laughs> yeah. And I'll just magically know math. Like, it's how it works. Was it? It was, uh, I'm not going to say the teacher's name, but I was going to say, I was, I was going to avoid that as well. Yeah. But there's definitely a math teacher where I, uh, I asked a lot of questions in that class. I, I really like math, but it takes me a lot to get to it. And he got to the point where, very disparagingly, at the end of a sentence, most of the time, he would look at me and go, do you have any questions now? Ooh, yeah, and, bad news. <laughs> and so I just shut down in that class and was like, well, well yeah. I'm, not, right, why would I'm you, not going to do anything. I'm, why would mind. you feel like you would want to be a part of that classroom environment? If that's going to be the response. And, and, and that's, that's kind of where a lot of classes that I had, because yeah, the thing I joke about with being a history major was, so I didn't have to take math, but all joking aside, <laughs> I, the, the one class I had to take before I needed to graduate was conveniently a math class. Um, of course. I, I knew in high school, um, I, I was accidentally enrolled in like an upper division math class. And I just did not understand anything. And the teacher was like, why don't you get this? Why don't you get this? It's, you know, everyone else is getting it. And then, you know, three weeks later, like I have a D in the class and then they're like, oh, hey, yeah, by the way, you, we put you in the wrong class. And then just having to come into a different environment where the teacher's like, oh, no, it's okay. Let's actually work on this. And it, it's just like, I don't, I, cause, yeah, I was like, Collins, like I asked so many questions. I stayed after class, but she's like, oh, I just don't understand why you don't get it. I was like, what, what do you mean I don't, you don't understand why I don't, like, <laughs> yeah. I don't even know why I don't get it. Um, <laughs> That's the most unhelpful response you could give. Uh-huh. And then, and then when I got get it to more, college, like, I mean, it was, my brain just completely shut off from math and I, I've just been turned off of it, of it ever since. Like math is the one thing I will go out of my way to not do just because I've had those experiences where the like, well, why, why don't you get this? I don't know. I'm in high school. I'm a I'm a junior. I don't know why you're yelling at me. I'm sorry. Meh. Yeah, and I think that's really unfortunate. Like, <clears throat> math suffers from several problems, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I haven't taught math in a few years, so I haven't thought about this like super hard lately. Because, like, you know, when you're teaching ancient history. We just talked yeah. about math. We just say math was invented. We don't really go into detail there. <laughs> but when I taught like fifth grade, uh-huh. math, yeah, ta-da, now it's here. Uh, but when I taught like fifth grade math, right, we, we would talk a lot about like these kind of things. And math, um, one problem math suffers from is that uh, 
it, it was historically been taught by just like rote memorization. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, that skill is not unuseful, right? Don't get me wrong. That is a very useful thing to have, especially when you're doing upper level math. Like you just have to know like your times tables, right? You know what I mean? <clears throat> so when you're young, that, that is an important part of it. But I think math, unfortunately, doesn't really get interesting until like high level algebra. Right. Right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden you go, whoa, you mm-hmm. could do that? Like all of a sudden now math does like crazy stuff. And it's like interesting. Like calculus is really, I, don't get me wrong, I'm not good at calculus, but like, I can kind of grasp the concepts that are happening. <clears throat> right. Right. Like these are now, this is now like, Oh, this is like actually doing stuff. Right. <laughs> and explaining things. And math is getting interesting, but it doesn't get the, like the skill floor for interesting math is like super high. <laughs> oh yeah. And <clears throat> I think a secondary problem, uh, like in the elementary school, right? Uh where I live is no nobody decides to become an elementary school teacher to teach math. Uh, yeah. Right? It's just kind of like that other thing that you have to teach. Mm-hmm. People teach elementary to be like, "Oh, I love reading and writing and we're going to do all this cool writers workshop stuff and we can do some science experiments and we'll do all this like fun things and like <clears throat> nobody goes, "Oh man, I'm going to I want to teach math to third graders." Right, you know, <laughs> and so like nobody ever. Yes, and nobody ever. So you got these people that are like, oh, I love elementary kids. I want to do all this stuff, and I also have to teach math too. Like that's like the last thing that they're really into. Mm. <clears throat> and so, like, just from experience, like if you're not like into it, for for me, this is only for me. I know other people are different. Like if for me, like if I'm not like into it, I really have a hard time teaching it. Right. That's like oh, when yeah, I sure. when I taught poetry, I was like, oh, what? <laughs> I had to work really hard to make that unit interesting. <laughs> because, <laughs> again, I like some poetry, but it's like not fifth grade poetry. <laughs> you know, I really think Emily Dickinson is cool. Uh, that doesn't really translate down to uh, <laughs> to ten year olds, right? Even really. I, I, I will I will say a quick side note though. Um, I can't remember what grade it was. It was definitely English in high school. Mrs. Shriver's class, who was absolutely obsessed with Romeo and Juliet and William Shakespeare in general. That's and many we had English to, teachers. We had, we had to read Shakespeare. And every day I, when I walked in, in the class, my friend, Josh Owen, if you're listening, I hate you. <laughs> wow. Say, wow. What a shout out. Because they'd be like, oh, hey, anyway. like, who do you like? Who wants to pl- who wants to read the part of, you know, Juliet? Who wants to read? the?" And every single day I'd get in there and Josh would be like, oh, hey, Aaron wants to read Romeo again. And so I got picked playing Romeo out of the entire play. And we try to read like every single day. And so that I, there's a special hatred in my heart for Romeo and Juliet because I had to read as Romeo to like six different du- Juliets in a span of like two weeks, or whatever that we read it. So it, it's it's a special hatred in my heart. Well, I don't like one. Romeo and Juliet for other reasons, but yeah. <laughs> number one, it's kind of boring. It's not the best Shakespeare work. Number two, the basic plot of Romeo and Juliet is as follows. <clears throat> Oh no, Mercutio! I'll never love another woman again. That woman broke my heart. Oh, a lady! <laughs> <laughs> That's the opening yeah. scene. That is the opening scene of Romeo and Juliet when they're at the party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're like fifteen. I'm like, come on, get up! Stop it! This is very uncomfortable right now. Yes, not okay. <laughs> like, I love you so much, I'll kill myself. Like, you've known her three days. Stop it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess it does a fairly decent job of capturing the irrationality of teenagers. <laughs> but exactly. I think, well, um, yes, <laughs> yes, and. <laughs> oh. I, f- 
found my wallet. Hey! Uh-oh. Hey! Or I should say, my wallet found me. Um, uh, we went to the park and we're at the park <laughs> and we came back from the park and we're in our living room. All of a sudden, Megan looks out at our uh, mailbox and goes, Colin, <laughs> your wallet's on the mailbox. And I go, what? <laughs> and I look over and my wallet is clipped to our mailbox. Wow. I, I go over, I grab it. Um, it was a, it was a, it was a, it's a money clip wallet with the, um, with just a uh, a slide where you just slide in your cards. So it's like a little pouch. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very simple. Well, I had the, one of those before. The metal clip had completely br- busted in half, uh-huh. broke it, broken off. And all of the cards looked like they had been ru- like folded in half, Ugh. hot dog style, and then run over. And so really? everything had was folded and <laughs> creased really well. <laughs> but everything was there. Everything was the everything. I didn't wasn't missing a single thing. It's very nice. Um, yeah, except for it's been run over by a truck, truck. like that. So <laughs> I had to throw away the uh, the wallet because it's just it was functionally not yeah. useful anymore. That made me sad. Um, and I was able to keep several of the cards and things like that. But I have a a new driver's ID and a new uh, debit card coming in. But that was uh-huh. crazy. That is crazy. Like, like, where where did this go? I still I still have no idea. I cannot pinpoint where on earth it could have possibly gone. Somewhere where there's lots of heavy machinery traffic, apparently, that smushed the heck out of you. Apparently. I don't know. But anyway, so that was. So you have to buy a new one now? Buy a new wallet? (gasps) I have already done this. Oh, okay. Hold on. Um, I did not. I, I I think I have described how I have been so hesitant to replace this wallet, and I have tried many times. It was yes. even on my list. If we roll back the tape to our oh yes. cheap everyday carry thing, where I considered getting a new wallet, but I was like, "There's yeah. no, there's no way." Especially a cheap one. That's a little rough. Okay, it's a, it's a bit yeah. It is it's rough. So I went with as minimalistic as I possibly could. That still had a nice feel to it yeah um i went with just a simple leather sleeve oh it only holds you can hold between two and like eight cards that's it there's no clip that's good there's a, it's just a leather sleeve and i love this thing so much it disappears oh, wow. yeah, it disappears go. into my pocket it's got like an exposed pocket on the front so if you could put if you want to put your driver's license in that so it wasn't bunched yeah. up with everything else which is what i'll probably do oh, that's not bad uh, but well it, i would put my school id in there because that way I, that the reason i don't want have a god new one yet is because i have like mine is basically like yours except for there's another flap on the other side that just closes over the money clip sure <clears throat> and in the money clip since i never carry cash i have clipped my school id mm-hmm. so i just flip it out and pay for my lunch that way there you go <laughs> But, but like I, right. yeah, I didn't want a money clip. I didn't want any extra flap. I was like, I, like I don't want a single. I don't want an extra pocket because I just wanted all the cards to slide in right next to each other so they don't move. Well, that's true. And anymore, I have like four. Right. That's kind of all I have in yeah, my yeah. life anyway. I, I, I have like my, like my insurance cards and like <laughs> my school card, and that's it. That's I don't have four. Exactly. I, I went on this. I went on this weird kick for a little while where I had those really long like cowboy wallets yes. yes i know it was and very so, confusing and so i have like three of them but i was like you know i kind of need something a little bit more smaller so i ordered one off of amazon and it's one of those scan proof wallets oh yeah yeah so people can like scan it but it's actually like really nice yeah. leather it's actually like oh, nice. it. yeah and so i just have my little stuff in there and it does its job this one's kind of cool there's a problem when you when you look for minimalist wallets or small wallets a lot of them are weird. like a lot of them are like titanium. And I'm yeah, like, I'm like, I don't want that in my there life. are a fewer things that I would like in my pocket than a titanium dagger, right? Effectively. Yeah. I, don't, I want this to be soft. That's true. I want to be able to play with it. I don't want to <laughs> cut my hand true. open. And I, don't, I didn't want it rigid. And I didn't, I just didn't want anything else. And so it I was like between one. this one and another one. one. And what is, what's kind of nice, and I don't know how good this is, but if you look at one of these third pictures, there's a little tab at the top. Yeah. And 
you pull that and it brings all of the cards from the center sleeve up. <clears throat> Oh, so you don't have to like spread apart the leather and stuff. Right. You know, hey. or, or, what, or what I was doing with my old one is I was pushing from the bottom. And so I had this nice wear pad oh, yeah. my thumb where I'm gripping the sides and then pushing at the top. To or all kinds. My old one like that, I would just like turn it over and like whack it on my right. hand. Yeah, and they exactly. would kind of come out a little bit. Exactly. So I don't know how, I don't know how robust this mechanism is, but I, it's cool. Right. I oh, yeah. We'll see from once, now how it goes. Whatever. Again, I really wanted something that had a very good feel to it. I wanted nice soft. This yeah. is very soft leather. It's very nice leather, um, and it's That's true. It's got just got these simple, very simple. So anyway, that would solve my problem too. I I have been I have been like all my, I don't. There's part of me that uh, I like this one because, like I said, you can put my school thing there and I can just scan my lunch because I don't want to go just like full blown teacher and buy a lanyard to hang my badge on. Don't so I get, just no, no don't I do can't it. do it. Like I thought about it and I was like, I can't. Because like my so, friend wears one and she has her keys on it, but I don't want my keys on my neck. That's annoying. I don't want it in my way. Right. I just gonna I just I did it. It's traumatic. <laughs> it is. So I I did with with us, we have little state badges that either um oh, that yeah. most people have like on lanyard. Um, my supervisor has one where it's like the little thing that's tapped, attached to his hip, which is actually kind of cool. Oh, the little like pull out zippy thing? I love those. Kind of, yes. Um, I recently got, um, a little bit more definitive, uh, lanyard thing, and it actually has a little cover case for my ID. Oh yeah, I've seen those too. I don't know if they can scan my lunch card through the plastic thing. Well, thankfully, mine doesn't have a scanner, but it has a, it has a little pocket on the back where I have my cards. Because oh, nice. usually I, I used to have uh. a little book that I would take notes on yeah. instead of fumbling around. But now I'm like, hey, look here, take this. Nice. Um, and then be on my way. So I, I got that. It's a little bit more professional looking. It's a little bit more true. crisper. And then when people ask me for my ID, I've been like, oh, well, here it is. Ba bam. That's true. That's not bad. Yeah, because usually I don't like what my keys with me because most of the day they're just sitting on my desk. I right. just take them when I go to like recess so I can, you know, get back in the building. That might be useful. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, <laughs> they would probably appreciate that. They would. Yeah. So, well, I'm locked out. I'll just I'm go locked out <laughs> again. No. Cause I'd be locked outside with a whole bunch of kids. Like, Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Find the door that's open. Right. Go to the office and be like, knock, quick. knock. Hello. <laughs> but yeah, that was, yes. That's something I've been thinking about too is new wallet. Cause mine is just like, it's like it's fine, but that's kind of where it stops. It's just it's fine, yeah, yeah. But I just don't. <clears throat> I'm getting to the point, like Colin was saying, like I just don't want things in my pockets. <laughs> I don't like it. Well, and, and uh, a, it annoys me. Now. I'm a front pocket carry for my wallet. Oh, that anyway. is important. True, I. It is important to this conversation that I have carried a front pocket wallet for. Ever. Yeah. My, my grandma got me one when I was in high school. We learned last year or last a couple weeks ago that I have been out of high school for a very long time. A minute. So, yeah. I mean, we're talking like 20 years of front pocket <laughs> wallet carry here. Okay. As depressing as that number is. Good gravy. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. Like 20 years since I've been doing that. So I can't even, like, I don't carry anything in my back pockets because, ew, no. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so I, I appreciate this because that's what it is. Again, it's it's literally a folded piece of leather stitched on two of the sides. Right, it's all it's all it is. It's kind of nice. It's a little, it's kind of the same as another one I've been looking at. And but I haven't bought because I'm just like eh, I don't. Know I just I want to buy. again I was I just pulled the trigger on this one because I have many many tabs open, <laughs> reading reviews, looking at <laughs> these things. That's true. And was like I just. I need one. I just need to pull the trigger. I just need to get one. Yes. I wasn't exactly happy with the price because I thought it was quite expensive. For That's what true. It, what it was. And Megan was like, it's how much? And I was like, shh, we're going to try this. <laughs> That's the other weird thing. Like <laughs> most like minimalist wallets are expensive. You're like, wait, I don't understand <laughs> why you get a trifold wallet for like $9. Yeah. Like here's a minimalist wallet. 75 bucks. <laughs> That's it was the, one, what, it was what it was it was a metal slab and ca- ca- that came with a, a an elastic like band 
And oh yeah, to, I've seen those. Put your cards on either side of the center That's ridiculous. metal spine and put this band around it, and it was it was like seventy dollars. I'm going, how nice of is, is that elastic? Because that's not going to yeah. last very long. <laughs> like no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, anyway. I've seen. I've been looking at some that are similar to that. They weren't the leather ones. I found I found some that were made out of recycled fire hose, and I was like. Yes, that that's kind of awesome. cool. Yeah, I'm kind of into that. I don't know if it's like, I don't know. The idea is appealing, so I might. I don't know. We'll see. Sure, I'm very excited <laughs> so, to see how it goes. I don't know if I will or not. But this brings me to something that I was uh, going to mention today. Oh, okay. about well, that's online shopping in general, right? There are. Do you find? Because this is what I find, and you tell me if you agree or you think I'm insane. Uh. I don't know I'm insane, so you don't have to super agree with me, but there are some things like for the most part, like I like online shopping because I just can't be bothered to go to a store sometimes. I just don't care, Mm -hmm. but there are some things that I want to buy that I'm like buying this online is the worst. Like I can't because the way that I shop, I'm very like browsy and I do like what you're talking about. Like I want to see like four or five different things. And like try to pull up a tab and like read all it's like it's just so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like it. There's just some things I'm like, uh and it affects the way that I shop online. <clears throat> because like I just bought some more pants, right? And I was just like, Well, I'm gonna buy these online because, you know, I don't want to go to a store. For a long time this year, I couldn't go to a store anyway. So that's kind of what brought on this thought. Um, it like <laughs> literally was impossible. Yeah. Uh, so I just like, well, these are exactly like a pair of pants I already own buying those. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, nothing. You're not going to go to adventurous, <laughs> get anything too new. And that, that's like this. Yeah. Because this. some people are like, I'll just send it back. No, I can't. That's, that's another return. step that I can't yeah. deal with. <laughs> I don't think I've ever returned anything in my life. Like I've never <laughs> bought something. And then gone like, oh, no, I'm going to take this back. Because I put so much, like, if I'm going to buy it, if I've already put enough thought into buying it, I'm, just, I'm keeping it. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm, no. We've come too far, right? It's I impulse buy things, but, like, on a small scale. It's like, oh, this candy, I don't need that. But, like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have friends who December 26th is known as return day. Yeah, like no, I they, can't. They go out and they they spend all day returning things that they got and like exchanging. And I just, I am like, great. I, I this this shirt I will literally never wear, but it's going in the closet just in Maybe case. Like, forever. I need a shirt. Sometimes you need like an extra shirt that you don't care if you're like it's yes. messed up. Yeah, right, one hundred percent. But like this wallet thing, my if I would have had my druthers, I would have been I would have gone to a couple different shops. And held them, put my cards in them, put it in my pocket, like yeah. walked, like done that kind of thing. Felt done some backflips. Done some backflips. No, and they're like, okay, it's secure. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> parkour. <laughs> and hardcore parkour. <laughs> and been fine. And, and I would have loved that. But now I'm not going to do that. I'm not. And we're, we're running into this. This is the, one of the most ridiculous statements I'm ever going to say on this podcast. And that's saying a lot. I doubt it. <laughs> this bar is really high. We need to replace Kobe's comfort pillow, and we don't know what we're going to do about it. Oh, um, so we have. Uh, Has he old. chewed a hole in it? Well, some dogs that came over played with it too roughly, Uh-oh. and the stuffing came off. So Kobe oh, has no. been sans comfort pillow for like five days now. And how is he coping? V- well, we have another pillow that's kind of okay, but it's not the same, and. And so we we found when we found this last one that if the threads were too long on it, so we like to get ones that kind of look furry and a little fuzzy, but if they're too long, he doesn't do it. He just kind of licks it. And he won't nurse on it. But if they're too oh, yeah. short, he doesn't like it. He'll just walk away from it. So like, because well, we he can't to, probably hold it in his mouth, right? So we have to go and like tangibly touch decorative yeah. pillows at the store <laughs> to figure yeah. out and run our fingers through. because there's we you can't see that through pictures no yeah. literally, literally nobody is measuring the pile length they should on be on shag <laughs> decorative pillows and telling you how long it is. this was 1974 they would be i'll tell they you that right totally now. would be but we don't have that and so we <laughs> you talked about not being able to buy things online or just it changes how you shop or 
Yeah. It's all these things. There are just some things, no matter how good it gets, no matter how many drones Amazon is able to get into your neighborhood to drop things off, there are some things that are just going to be better yeah. at buying in person. Just, I mean, and that's why, like, that's why I only buy one brand of shoe. Right. <laughs> Number one, I like them. <laughs> Right. I get different styles of it. I don't like, I haven't worn the same like exact style of shoe forever, but I wear Adidas tennis shoes. Uh-huh. That's it. Because I know exactly how they're going to fit me. Uh-huh. And it doesn't really matter what style or what color or whatever. Like there are certain things about how they're made that fit my foot really good. Yeah. That's what I buy. But I, and now I just buy them online. Like, oh, this is Adidas. It'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Buy it. Right. Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> no, and so like I don't worry about it but like if you're trying to like venture out and buy something new like it's really hard for me to do that like on the internet because it's like well I don't know if I, I don't know if I like this like does it actually especially shoes shoes are hard anyway like clothing in general is like so complex yeah. right like <laughs> that's like well yeah you talk i just i actually had to replace a pair of five fingers recently because i wore them out in <laughs> saying all kinds of weird sentences today see, Nobody- <laughs> it's just getting great it's just getting but it was like that like, i have worn those now pretty much every day I, i've worn a pair of those pretty much every day for the past seven years eight years yeah uh, i'm not gonna go try and find something different at this point like I just so I'm worried that the one style that I like it's it was one of the first ones that they came out with it's their like, like yeah and it's like it's holding on they've taken this whole brain in weird directions that this one's been like the one that's still hanging on so at some point I'm gonna have to buy like twelve of these and put yeah them in my, I in like my closet. I am very I find it weird that uh, the fiber and five toes has gone in a weird direction like I don't really understand. <laughs> I am I I'm not kidding you. This time around, I was so close. They have this a new like um like Canva canvas one. And what? I yeah, it's made out of this weird like canvas material. I want that shoe so bad because <laughs> it, it's kinda it kinda well they kind of look like like Tom's that style of of like the oh, brown yeah. sandy thing. That's what yeah. it is, but it's a vibrant five finger. And I was like, that would be perfect. Is it called five finger or five toe? Five finger. I always thought it was toe because it's on your foot. No, but they're no Vibram five fingers. Okay. I mean, you would know, but I always thought it was toes. Nope. Because, you know, there are toes in the shoe. <laughs> yeah. So. I know. Yes, and. Okay. But, but, but they, they call it five finger for your foot because it's like a glove. That's all. Oh, that's uh, the whole okay. Thing. Okay. So, anyway, great. Like, I was, I was really tempted to swing away from the ones that I normally get, but I was like, no, I just, not, not this time. Not this time. We'll see. Because I still like to run and work out and do that kind of stuff in them but yeah because they've got like weird like leisure ones that you can wear i mean i guess you and, could get two pairs yeah but they're kind of also expensive too like. well i mean that's true but like <laughs> yeah you don't have to buy them at the same time down the, yeah i'm thinking that's why i'm saying like you could yeah. buy a new one of the normal one and then like mm-hmm. in a couple months buy yeah. the other like right that's what i'm saying like right right, right. you don't yeah. have to buy like you don't have to buy two right now that's crazy <laughs> have no more money right because yeah they've got like boot style where they've got like a high like almost a high ankle <laughs> what they don't they don't cover the ankle because that's also their whole thing of like you have to have free range of your, your foot but they're like oh they're, it was like, like a knee-high like snow right. boot <laughs> <Yeah>. like <laughs> Like mm. a mid calf boot, <laughs> like what? Uh, uh. No, like but fur like, on it. Like, what the heck? <laughs> oh, this is great. This is getting better. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, next season. Next season. The winter, that's the winter shoe. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, it's like I'm not gonna try and find. I just love that style so much. I'm not gonna try and find something new. Uh, and I know that's kind of, but, but because I know it's gonna work, right? I know, it, I know it's gonna work, and I'm not gonna be adventurous on that because. I literally wear those every single day. It's, I have yeah. I have a pair of shoe that I wear, and it's those and my chacos. But it's like like those it, those are all I wear. So it's like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna risk it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean that's similar. I don't buy the exact same Adidas tennis shoe, but like yeah, you guys I, go well. I, this I, is Adidas. Yeah. My because my like my the front of my foot, my like toe box, whatever is wide. Right. Yeah. And like other brands of shoes are not. And so it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> so like I wear Adidas because they are wider just in general. 
Right. So I like them. But I just buy like what I mean, whatever one doesn't matter. Like, oh, this one or this one. But it's the same brand. So the right. brand and the pattern is similar enough that I don't mind. <laughs> I did sure. become very bold. However, I decided for the first time in well, I don't really we don't need to get into the number of years. But I bought a pair of white tennis shoes. Boom. What's up? What? <laughs> oh, why, yeah. <laughs> why did you do that? Uh, because I wanted them. I, okay, I, 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 I have to ask, what, <laughs> what, what tennis shoes? Well, they're just Adidas tennis shoes. They're okay. white gum sold Adidas. Okay. And I was like, well, because I needed some new ones. My other ones are like tearing. So I was like, I'm going to buy these white ones. Now I didn't. They were on sale, so I actually bought two pairs of Adidas tennis shoes for like no money. But one of them, the other one's just all black. So, but <laughs> <laughs> a pair of white ones. I was like, I have not owned white tennis shoes since I was in the second grade. And why? Okay. Why was that? <laughs> uh, because when I was a second grade, I was a dirty little mongrel, and <laughs> as second graders are wont to be, <laughs> as second graders are wont to do. They were white for all of 45 seconds and then right. they turned brown. But <laughs> figure an adult and give a shot. They look cool. I like it. So for 48 seconds. <laughs> Boom. Hey, I've worn them like three days of school and they're still white. So, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Killing it. <laughs> but that's one of those weird things too. Like going with the shopping thing, like because now I'm officially grumpy old man territory i've realized uh and like getting like that and some other stuff just like picking up some clothes that i like i need another pair of jeans because mine like ripped and stuff my knees ripped out of my older ones uh <clears throat> like i've worn the same style of like x thing for such a long time <laughs> <laughs> that like do you like at this point i know like nobody actually cares like if you it's one of those like self-conscious things too like uh-huh. you're the only one that knows that so if you right. do something different like yeah. no one cares no. but like part of like i don't know like sunglasses right something arbitrary like that i've worn aviator style sunglasses <laughs> forever yeah forever right and so like <clears throat> Not like the big ones, like the smaller, like the rectangly ones. Yeah, yeah. But like, I've worn those style of sunglasses in some incarnation for ever. And so like, if you're buying sunglasses, you go, you have this thought in your mind like, well, do I buy more? Mm-hmm. Or do I buy like this other one? Like, like I don't know. What's another A club style sunglass, right? What do you do? A pee. Right. Too far out there, like you know. <laughs> and again, no. I, this is only you're the only person thinking this. No one else cares. Like all of my friends are not going to go. Whoa, you changed. Something. Like no one cares. That's crazy. Right? No. Susan probably will be like, "What the heck?" But that's it, <laughs> sure. and that's fine. She's supposed to. Right? Yeah, she says that about everything I do. But like, she goes, "Why?" No, why? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, you know, I, the sunglasses is a great example. I I've worn the 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 more. Uh, circle wreck or wreck circled ones, not the full circle or the big huge ones. Um, yeah, the for for a while too. And I go and I look in and I'm like, oh, I've got to get a new pair of sunglasses now. Well, I, they, I brought this up because I need I, the mine are so scratched. Yeah, I can't. Right. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and you go okay. I'm going to. You walk up to the big rack of everything. And you're like, which is the choose. only acceptable place to buy sunglasses because I wow. suffer from the infamous sunglass curse of. If I pay ten dollars for them, they last me for years. Uh-huh. If I pay like forty dollars for them, they break tomorrow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so I to the sunglasses. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh no. So I so I kind of went. Have been getting out of my comfort zone. Oh, Aaron is um, traditionally a sport sunglasses guy. Yeah. By the way, so, in case you're curious, so listeners, I, I know you're. So I know I you have, are. So previously, whenever I was coaching baseball, it had to be like twenty five dollar baseball sunglasses off of Amazon or whatever. <laughs> I, a while back, um, under support and peer pressure from a certain um, significant 
other of mine. <laughs> uh, I had spent a hundred and thirty nine dollars on oy, oy. Oakley's. Um, and I have, I still have the case. I still have the little sleeve <laughs> thing going. I still have the little glass cleaner. And I have, every time they come off my head, they go straight to that. <laughs> um, I have also gone a little out of, out of unorthodoxy of, of purchasing Under Armour shoes. Never have owned Under Armour, except for when, Mimi bought me Under Armour cleats for like two games my senior yeah. year. And I was like, oh, yay. Um, I even bought, this is recently, so what was it? Two weeks ago, we, uh, last week, we actually, we went down to Broken Bow and did some adventuring. Um, and then the week before that, or two weeks before that, we went to Pahuska and did some um, touristy shopping and stuff. And I spent like 60 bucks on the, uh, a pair of shoes called dudes. Um, they are kind of like, I got them at a, uh, it was called Osage outfitter. And it was kind of like, they're, they're not, what is the shoes called? There's a, there's a certain pair that was like an all leather, um, twisted X's is what they're called. But this is kind of like a more you know, fabric focused brand of shoes. That's like 65 bucks. And they are super comfortable, and I've been wearing them. But normally, traditionally, I would have looked at them and been like, well, I don't really need those. But again, with some, you know, support and arm twisting, um, I kind of was <laughs> like, you know what? You know, I don't I don't buy shoes that often or at all. Um, I still rock my, uh, oh, what are they called? My Tevas that I had for like. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, like nine years essentially oh. um and so I, I still have those and a, a, some other shoes but i i've kind of branched out a little bit outside of my comfort zone oh, um, nice. and my, my my dudes are pretty are like really <laughs> comfortable don't think about too much um but they are hey my dudes <laughs> this is how he talks to his feet now <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, and yeah, so they're, they're, they're just something that I put on to go either to the store or run out and do something. Um, I don't wear them when I go out and do like investigation stuff. I usually wear like my boots, but, well, yeah. um, but I, I, I kind of, you know, recently have, have been out and shopped outside of my, my norm, so to speak. Well, yeah, that's interesting. Is it? And yeah, I, I just remember, you know, in in the car with with her family, it's like, oh, Aaron, you need to get some better sunglasses. Like, well, these are cool sunglasses. Like, oh man, you get some Oakleys. Fine, I'll get some Oakleys. I went on no, the website, no. I clicked buy, no. and I put my phone away, and I'm like, wait, what did I? Just-? Yeah, and that's what. Well, that's one of those things, like, you know, like the cost benefit of the brand buying. Like for me, that's not where I'm going to spend my money. But for someone who's out driving around all day wearing sunglasses. That's a probably a good thing. That makes sense, yeah. right? That's for me inside, literally all day long in a classroom. <laughs> I don't, I don't need to, <laughs> like, I don't need yeah. to do that. But it is like Aaron said, it is weird when you're like that final push of like I'm going to do this now, and it's like a big breakthrough for you, mm-hmm. right? You're like, oh, this is going to be so awesome, and like literally no one cares. That's the other. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, dang it. Well, like I'm thinking about like, uh, I don't know, was it like 10 years or so ago? I switched up my hat game, right? I started wearing like those flat brim hats, yeah, you know, yeah. like a long time ago. Cause I was just like, baseball hats are boring and I don't like it. <laughs> and they're dumb, <laughs> they're dumb and they look weird and I'm sick of it. So I was just like, what am I going to do? I need to wear a hat all the time. Because it's like conditioned from my youth that I just must, and so I was like, "Well, I feel, I feel this, I feel super awkward, like without one." It's just that point, right? Well, it's like I'm gonna do this now. And even then, that's a big question of: Am I a hat person? 
Am oh, I, I am like, definitely. Am I, but but <laughs> we do that. We do that with each st- with each thing. Oh, we keep yes. talking about it, like, am I a this person? Am, yeah. am I a am I a Chaco person? Am I is that? Yeah, I am not a sandal individual. Does that communicate what I want communicated about me. Like, is that no? That's I a good point, seen? right? It's like a it's an outward expression of you, mm-hmm. right? And I, I, you know, I think about it sometimes. There's a good quote from a movie. And it's definitely Steve Martin. Uh, where he's like, you know, he's talking about something else, but he's like, you know, changing is hard. So it's easiest if you change from the outside in. Right. So sometimes those little steps come with like a different clothing option. Right. Because it's now you expressing something outwardly mm-hmm. different. Right. And it's difficult. Like if you're like me and are just like curmudgeonly worn like Levi's jeans for your whole entire life. You're like, do I buy other pants? No, the answer is no currently. But like, <laughs> but, but like you know, even at work, like I just wear tennis shoes to work. That's it. That's all I do. I don't wear anything else. Tennis shoes only. And you know, that is like kind of my vibe, right? Like, mm-hmm. not uh, some other people do that at school. Not everybody other people wear like fancy shoes or like normal people shoes i don't know i just wear tennis shoes because i'm not you know this is how i am so that's like the presentation of me is this tennis shoe like that says something i don't know exactly what part of it says these are comfortable but the rest of it is like (laughs) 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 it does say something else about your personality which is like casual tennis shoe right like Mm -hmm. They're not dirty. They're clean, but like, it just it says something. Like you it's know, simple. so it's, <laughs> like, yeah. Am it's I a, this kind of? Am I? Because like I, if I'm talking about footwear, there are definitely certain things I am not. Right? right. I am not a sandal wearing individual. Right. No, I own a pair of sandals because Mimi made me buy them like a long time ago. <laughs> I have them in my closet. I don't I ever wear them. <laughs> Never. I can't. I cannot do sandals, and I cannot do like boots. Yeah. Like no. I do I have a Yeah, I don't really have I have like a like some kind of boot, but I only wear it because it's like a dress e shoe. Mm. So if I have to like dress up for like parent night or whatever, supposed to wear that instead. But like cowboy boots? No. I can't. No, I don't. <laughs> I can't deal with it. It's too well, much. Well, and I was just thinking of like the difference of in the school rooms, school setting, thinking back to again, those many, many years ago of what somebody who wore uh, Adidas or Vans communicated versus somebody who wore Doc Martens. You yeah. Know? Like, like even then there was this yeah. very big differentiation in what was meant to be communicated to people. Uh, it's true. And and that does things like that do carry forward because yeah right if you were to, uh, if you were still a doc if if you were a Doc Martin person you know never happened but yeah happened but right right like, like, that that is meant to communicate something very different than yeah an Adidas person it's like a more formal ish right type of thing it's a very, like you take yourself it, to me it always meant like uh, you take yourself very seriously yeah. <laughs> Right, you and, know, and, and this is a very serious occasion. <laughs> yeah, because like when I have other shoes, I have like some like leather shoes. They're like my quote unquote dress shoes, right? If I'm talking about like that, yeah, that you wear. Like sometimes tennis shoes are not appropriate for you know certain events. Like if I'm going to a wedding, probably not going to wear my tennis shoes. Sure. I guess, but <laughs> <laughs> right, but well, something but, else. But yeah, but you notice when you wear something different, you. F- feel different too so that quote that you said you know you That's brought true. on is very apt in that if we want to elicit changes or, or responses or even feel different put on a dress shirt right you will yeah. feel different about yourself and the day as opposed to whatever you were wearing before yeah. it, it, even if it is just for that day right yeah, it's, like, it's this weird it's this weird manifestation of of a of this um you know change in our mental mindset from this phys- from the physical world around us and how mm-hmm. easily we can change that with these weird simple actions. Yeah, it is kind of bizarre. Cuz like that's, you know, 
How you? Because a lot of times you have people dress like, "How do I feel today? Right. Yeah. What do I want? What am I going to wear? Because like some days, you know, especially in the like the winter time, you know, when you're teaching, right? Like, do I want to wear this button up shirt, or do I just want to wear this sweater? Like that's what. <laughs> What kind of mood am I in right now? How am I feeling today? Like this gray sweater wins. Boom. <laughs> Every time. Right. But that's a real thing too. Of, of the, there are people who wake up and go, how do I want to feel today? Am I a, am I a this person today? Am I a that person? Yeah, today? true. Uh, most of us just get up and put on clothes. I feel, <laughs> I don't know. Most of us, I know I do. I just get up and, <laughs> and I try and wear like the same thing as much as possible and just, ignore it completely but there are still days where i go okay like yeah i like the way this makes this shirt makes me feel well again more. my choice is to be colors because i do have a lot of like they just button up shirts yeah or let's yeah. be honest some of them are pearl snap shirts because those are just the coolest but still, like <laughs> still count still, still count, count. ha like i just wear that that's what i wear all the time yeah because it's dressy enough for work it's like casually mm-hmm. And I don't have to tuck it in most of the time. So that's nice. Because that's annoying. And like... (laughs) (laughs) But some days that's too much. I have like a handful of polo shirts. And some days it's like, nah, I'm just wearing this. Nah, it's fine. Nah, I don't care. Here's a black polo shirt done. Here we go. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Really helps out. (laughs) Yes. No. That's good. like that. <laughs> I had one other thing I was going to bring up. Oh, no. Hey, while Colin is thinking of that, I, I will say um, all day today it was about, what is it, like 50s, 60s, just cold weather wise. And I, I pulled out like. That's rude. It was 82 all, degrees here. All of my like. Um, like long sleeves, little pullover stuff that I just love to wear. Yeah. Um, and then, but apparently the rest of the week, it's like oh, highs man. of like eighties. And I, mm. I love cold weather. I love hunting season. And Same. so I have, I have but a lot I of like, I, love cold weather. I just have like a lot of like long sleeve, just like little pullover <laughs> stuff. Either they're to be like light or like midi, midi, eh, medium or thicker ones. I oh, see that. Like, that's the only thing I was saying. That's not the thing I was thinking about this weekend when I was talking about online shopping. I need something like that to, because like in my classroom, cause I keep it rather chilly in there. Cause number one, when you have to wear the mask in the classroom all day, it's, it's you know, you don't want it to be hot. It's hot. Number two, sixth graders just smell bad. So like you gonna do that. But, um, <clears throat> like most of the time it's fine. And on like Wednesdays, we're just supposed to wear like the school t-shirt, you know? And it's kind of, you know, it's kind of awkward. Like, I think it's weird, but whatever. That's sure. the whole school wears the same t shirt. It's like a unity here we're all together thing. Hmm. Uh, which yeah. is cool. Yeah. But like my room is very cold <laughs> and my desk, so like while my off while my planning or anything lunch or whatever, uh my desk is right under <laughs> the the air vent. Yeah. And it gets so cold. <laughs> and I wanted some kind of like light thing but i didn't want to pull over because that's annoying to take on and off i wanted like a zip front one and i can't find one i don't know online like what it what the one would that i want is because i can't tell you can't tell the weight you know because like aaron's talking about he's got like the real light one yeah or like a big heavy one like Mm -hmm. online you can't always tell that and so (laughs) i was sitting there at my desk today doing some papers and i was like (laughs) <laughs> yeah just get frustrated you're like well yes. whatever it's like man i wish i had to check it right now because it's mm-hmm. air vent is so cool <laughs> <laughs> but that's but that's kind of kind of the stuff that i have like i was you know you know the main fact that that we're moving but i you know got all my stuff out it's like oh man i got this and i can wear this and i looked at the temperature and it's like man, it's gonna be 80 degrees come Friday. And, yeah. oh, Dang it. <laughs> so close. Again, oh. September is a lie, right? <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, crap. Yeah, I think tomorrow's supposed to be in the 70s. 
seventies. This is my weather thing. Yeah, seventy six. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Tomorrow, otherwise known as indoor recess day, looks like here from this weather forecast. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> indoor recess. I don't like indoor recess. It's not fun. So yeah. But yeah, that's another thing that made me think about that. I was like, I need to buy that. I want, not need. I would like to purchase something like this. <laughs> but looking at them online, you're like, but what? But yeah. How do I, I can't browse this online. <laughs> I can't that was... just look at a rack of a bunch of them and go, this one. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's hard to tell. That was definitely when I got really into uh, duck hunting about a few years back where I was looking at uh, inexpensive versions of waders and bibbers. I was like, I don't need to go into a store. I can just sure up on, shop online, but looking at it and, you know, I don't want to ask in like the little customer review thing. I'm like, is yeah. this thick? How thick is this? Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's some things you don't actually think about to ask, even if there is a customer as most online doesn't have a customer service. <laughs> uh, Except for the place I bought my guitar, they have like an insane customer service, which is it throws me off guard every time they just like randomly call me up and ask how it's going. Like what? It, what? It, what? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. What? So they have sales representatives that like keep in touch with you, just randomly. Let's call you up. Hey man, how's it going? Is that thing still working out? Cool. You got anything else on your list? We can help you out. You got any questions? Like you can literally just call them up and ask them about things. So you don't have to pull open like 75,000 tabs. That's crazy. You can just call them and they'll just, let's talk to you forever. I just talk to you about stuff. How's it going? Like, oh, I see that you're interested in this or, you know, did that work out? Uh, You're looking for stuff to go with that, you know? There's, yeah, like my dude, he just calls me up sometimes. Hey man, what's up? How's it going? (laughs) Just talks to you for a little bit. He's like, all right, cool. See you later. Like, what? Like, at first, it really kind of, like, threw me off. I was like, dude, I bought a guitar cable. Why are you calling me? <laughs> Why are you still here? <laughs> it throw me off, too. But, like, because that's just not something that you're used to anymore. Is that happening? Mm-hmm. Right? So, if you want to buy things, call up Sweetwater. All right? Not sponsored, but good yeah. gravy. They'll yeah. just, like, they'll just hang out. You know, I don't know if I should say his name online, but, uh, uh, yeah. No. <laughs> my, my dude there, you know. Guitar dude. He's... Guitar guy. <laughs> Not the same thing as Aaron's dudes. Uh, That's true. I <laughs> think <laughs> well, like, they say people that are like, you know, it depends on what you want. Like if you wanted to buy like audio equipment stuff, they have like, you know, three or four people that that's just all that they know and talk about. Mm-hmm. Is that and they could tell you stuff. Yeah, which is what you which is who you want to be talking to, right? It's, yeah. It's, it's who you want calling you, going, yeah. you need anything else? <laughs> yeah. Because my dude, he's all like, yeah, this is my, he told me about like his guitar collection. He's like, I've been playing guitar for this long. This is kind of music I play. So if you got questions about that specifically, I can help you out. Or, you know, I know some other people, if you got other questions, I can get back to you. And they do, he'll email you. Or like, call you up randomly later. Oh, hey, dude, I found an answer to your question. You're like, what? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of awesome. So, uh, but it's another, that's one of those things that it's helpful. But it does, if you're not, you know, you're not used to that anymore. Like, Mm -hmm. so it kind of does surprise you. (laughs) Just calls you up like, yo. What's up? Right. Ah. Did you think about the other thing that you were going to say? I did not. Uh, I I, I was trying to think back. I was like, oh, there was something I was going to say. You know, uh, yes. The only thing that's really weird this year is, uh. The only very, thing? Well, <laughs> one of the things that's very weird this okay, year we go. is it is just now Tour de France time. In case you didn't oh, know that. yes. So I was going to say, yeah, yes. Right. It, it's so weird how it is I, it, just crazy. That how it's now, now. And I can't watch it. Because normally I really like to watch it. Yeah. <clears throat> for several reasons. This year, Team Ineos is like not there. Yeah. So I want to watch that. Which is because I want to see somebody else win the dang tour. It's so weird not having that presence 
yes. on the road. It's really a free for all because I watched it over the weekend. It's insane. <laughs> and like, there's just, it's cool because it's like one on one go time. Uh-huh. It's just like four or five dudes going. You're like, whoa, there's yeah. not 87 Team Sky dudes just like sitting there being really annoying mm-hmm. and never doing anything ever and never attacking. And just, and just riding a bike. It's so awful. But like, yeah, it's crazy. It really is gone back to, but I remember the, the discussions the past several years have been, where the G, get the GC guys out and have them just freaking see what they can do. You know, do. Well, yeah, that's, well, a lot of the rule changes they made have been to like go that way. Because yeah. a lot of the race organizers are like, this is, I think they they kind of felt like all the audience was like, this is really boring to watch. Yeah. So, like, they brought back time bonuses mm-hmm. at all these places and all that stuff, you know? Yeah. Which has so really helped. And then and then to, to see people doing a lot more of the one-on-one, people out yeah. on their own. To see and, Primo Svarovic be like, you know, I'm going to attack now. Bye. Bye. Like, <laughs> now's and there not okay. be, like, seven Team Sky dudes just, like, slowly follow him. Right. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Yep. Keeping the pace. That's all they do. It's just yeah. 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 Boring. Yep. <laughs> now. So the other the other problem today. Did you hear about today's controversy or on my boy, my favorite boy? Now again, I will say like I sound like I definitely have a double standard because I hate when Team Sky wins all the time, but I definitely love when Peter Sagan wins all the time. <laughs> How could you not love when he wins? Because he's like he's the greatest. So, so did you hear about today though? Yes. yes. <clears throat> right. So this is what here's what I'm gonna say. Okay, all, first of all, cyclists on the Tour de France. You are the most famous, most well paid person that no one has ever heard of. Okay, mm-hmm. I just want you to know that. No one cares. Ooh, shots that fired. you shots yes fired. that you're like oh Peter. So- I read some tweets today for some people. You've put my career in danger. You should have bricked while going around Wout Van Aert. First of all, Wout Van Aert, if you don't want to get barged, go back to cyclocross. Shut up. Get out. Okay? Go down a hill on some mud. Talk about Mm -hmm. it. Second of all, if, like, so Peter went between the boards and this guy. Yeah. That was it. And he just, like, didn't hit the boards. And they're like, he shoved him. He's going to take his penalty out. Okay? I want us to cast our mind back. To my least favorite cyclist in the history of cycling. Okay. Do we need to vote on this? No, there's no vote. I have a least favorite cyclist in the history okay. of cycling. Okay. And his uh, name, taking notes, his name is Mark Cavendish. <laughs> I know. This man is terrible, right? Like, he's such a smart aleck. Anyway, I don't like it for lots of reasons. But yeah. he comes from a school, like, old, like, the old style sprinting, right? Mm-hmm. Big, huge lead out, right? Really bargy sprint finishes. Yeah, the guy, the, right? Because, they're, because, because his was basically the sprinters w- were so honed on sprinting that when it came to the mountain stage, you just <laughs> never heard of them again. Yeah. Right? They were, and that's, that's, I mean, that's how it is this year. Like this year, yes, like two days ago, where was Caleb Ewan? Nowhere. That's where it's 75 <laughs> miles off the back. But, but Mark right. Cavendish, even more so. Even worse. Like him, old, old, these older guys, not like older, but like, they, they've been around like a, just I mean, even like five years ago, six years ago. Yeah. Big lead out sprinters, Andre Greipel, right? Mm-hmm. These big, fast, right? But they used to have this huge lead out train, right? Yes. Where there's yeah. like five dudes leading you to the line. Yep. <clears throat> and it was just, it was the most insane thing, right? You have like four or five teams with five dude lead outs. Holy, what? Yeah. And it was very chaotic and bumpy and bargy, right? <clears throat> so Mark Cavendish won many races by leaning his head on people <laughs> and shoving them out of his way. <laughs> yeah. But so when he does that, it's beautiful. It's the art of sprinting, right? Peter Sagan touches one dude with his elbow. He should be banned. He's so dangerous from sports. It's I can't believe. But, 
what are you talking about? The old man in me is like, listen up, buddy. Yeah. If you can't be touched on your body, get out. Right? Yeah. Get out. I know it's dangerous. You can fall and break your little collarbone. Okay, I understand this. But come on. Like, get out of here. So that really annoys me that, like, <coughs> this year, there's no lead outs. It's just like this big free for all disaster. Mm-hmm. And they can't, they're like really confused that people bump into each other. Like, of course, there's no organization whatsoever. There is no teams like leading people out, being in charge, doing that stuff. And they're like, oh, he touched his wheel. He's so dangerous. Blah. And like, I read a lot of stuff from retired cyclists that were like, why are you crying? Yeah. Did you crash? No. Yeah, you're fine. Get out. <laughs> He's like, ride your bike. Go away. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. But yeah, that's one of those it's things. So that, like, ridiculous. I can't. Gonna, oh. If you're going to be up, because that was the thing. Like, if you're going to be up with the sprinters, be prepared for a contact sport. That's the yeah. time that. And it, even the others. But the, uh, the problem is some of the other sprinters are like, I can't believe he almost touched me. Like, what? What? You can't? Like, yeah, do you see I, how many people are on the road right now? What are you uh-huh. talking about? And it happens all the time. He gets, you know, he's a big dude and he's a big name. So he gets like singled out immediately yeah. and he wins all the time. So people are like, oh, we don't like him, which again, I know I'm double standarding because I love Peter Soggy. He's awesome. <clears throat> uh, team Peter all the way. But like, you know, I get it. Some of these other guys are good, but he's, they're like good sprinters. He's a very good all around because he wins all those intermediate points and he gets over some middle mountains and he takes these points, right? He's just like really consistent and really good. Yeah. But these other people, like, like, I don't understand what sport you think you're in. If you're like, <laughs> like what do you think you're doing? Because <laughs> I have seen some sprint finishes in the past that are like, it looks like a fight. Like, <laughs> and again, I have actually seen Mark Cavendish leaning his head into somebody's chest and like, pushing them out of the way and the announcers just applauding him and how uh-huh. great it is You're like and again he did that but if anybody did to him he was like i can't believe they're so dangerous like, shut up mark go away mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i have years of not liking him but yes that's what the other thing today but it's just weird that it's so late and it's so bizarre Feels I normally really like to watch it. I don't know why. Because I don't watch any other cycling. <laughs> it's the one. It's, you know, I think part of it is, is just when you think about what they're doing every single day for three weeks. Of, uh, yeah. For rest days, right? Like, just. No, it's, yeah, it's basically three weeks. With, just in well, how, I guess four weeks with some rest days. You're right. But just how insane that is. I think what they're doing. Oh, yeah. And the level of like. It's not just like imagine if you know the Super Bowl they played all day for <laughs> yeah <laughs> right like if they, they rode one hundred and sixty it would say one hundred sixty eight kilometers yeah and we're st- and are expected to f- perform the exact same tomorrow yeah and it's so crazy it is, it's it's amazing <laughs> it's awesome uh, but yeah it feels weird this time of year and and also because the fact that the the um, the rest of the cycling season is so compressed that there's overlap. Like what was the, yeah, other, right? It's really like, weird. I don't because, know. Cause a lot of the, I know like a lot of the GC guys would go on and do the Euro and the Vuelta and those things. Yeah. But I think it's the Vuelta be, set. Yeah. The Vuelta is at the end. It's, it's Giro tour Vuelta. Right? right. Yeah. But like there's some overlap possibly with, depending on if delays happen and things like that. So it's like, I don't know. Like how Yeah, cause world championships got weirded out. Um, they didn't do a lot of those spring classic races, you know, like Perry Roubaix and the, a lot of those got moved weird or they cut some and it was, it was bizarre. Yeah. So it's a really weird season. But oh, yeah, oh. the fact that it's in September is bizarre because you're like, no cycling in France on Bastille Day. That's just weird. It's, I don't know. <laughs> but what was the, uh, they talk about, you know, they're trying to do this bubble, uh, kind of like the, uh, baseball over here right where the people yes it's like over 700 people involved in the bubble uh-huh. did oh, you yeah. hear did you hear the um the president of the uci or well, the tour director got tour it director, yeah, tour yeah. director got it but um but they were talking about just simple yesterday things. yeah that came out yeah. yesterday they're talking about simple things just like 
if the massage team, if one of them comes down with it, mm-hmm. you can't, unless you have back home a masseuse in quarantine, you can't just swap in somebody. Oh, yeah. So it's like all these people are. Well, now, now that we've reached day 10. They can't. The the plan for this year is if if it, if the infection gets you, out, they're stopping it. Yeah. yeah. So whatever happens now, they can yeah. just pull the plug, and whoever's in yellow when they pull the plug, they win. Yeah. Done. Which is insane. It's crazy. Yeah. But yeah, they had some people test positive. No riders. No riders yet. But um, a couple people from. I think it was like yesterday. It was like four or five people. Yeah, total. just ancillary people. <clears throat> but, but there's a certain number too. Like if a certain number of people on that are affiliated with a team, that mm-hmm. team gets yanked. Yeah, yeah, completely. Which is nuts. Which is insane. Which makes sense. But like, holy cow, that's like. <laughs> could, you ima- could you imagine? Right. Yeah. Everything going. If you're any of us, and bam, mm-hmm. bye. Mm-hmm. So I anyways, again. Sorry. <laughs> it was just weird. It was interesting to think about that of like, yeah, your support staff who are there who you rely on, who you need yeah. the mechanics. And it's hundreds the cooks, of people. All that stuff. You can't just swap those in like you used to. So yeah. people are they have backups on backups of basically going, Hey, you're a you're the backup cook, so you need to go mm-hmm. sit in your house for two <laughs> two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty crazy. It is. It's insane. So yeah, but now yeah, so now and now we're past the benchmark of any day if they because they're testing like all the time, testing tests, writers yeah. testing, staff testing, blah blah. But if they get to a certain number, I don't remember what that X number is, but there is a number where tour is done. Goodbye. Organizers yank the plug. It's over. And yeah, whoever is in the lead wins. Holy cow. Okay. So I know I'm not the cyclingest person ever. <laughs> That's prevalent about everything. But yes, I also if, agree if you, that Julian Alphilippe's penalty for that extra snack bar was <laughs> ridiculous and he should not have been docked that much time. I love Julian Alphilippe. But if you if you want to look into um kind of the whole um virus and sports um on YouTube, there's a baseball pitcher by the name of Trevor Bauer. And it's called uh, baseball season in, uh, with COVID, and he has pretty much vlogs um, weekly of the players' outlook on the virus and kind of how everything has kind of transpired, all the stuff that they have to do. Um, so if you want, I mean, his videos are like fifteen minutes long, yeah, and it just cool. it's just kind of a neat little look. I think it's under his channel called Momentum, kind of where um, if you ever just need to take a gander or just kind of want to see what um you know with with you know mainstream sports is like kind of behind the scenes um that's kind of a a thing that i watch you know weekly uh of just kind of see what sports is going on how how it's kind of dealing with the outbreak and it's stuff like that so i mean he, is- he, goes, he goes through testing he goes through the process that he has to do even before he goes to the stadium and how traveling and you know yeah. staying at certain hotels kind of works. It's it's just an interesting outlook since he has his camera with him all the time. That's cool. So I don't follow baseball at all, as we know. Um, what does the baseball season look like this year? Anyway, I know like hockey is like, hey guys, what's the playoffs high? Like, <laughs> so it's, so it's, it's, it's kind of it's kind of a um um I can't remember the the games that it's limited to, but it, it's it's also kind of a weird vibe of them just kind of going off to what happens because there's been some teams like the Cardinals, for example, that had to postpone several games because some of their players and staff tested positive. So they had, they had to quarantine for about, you know, two weeks, which Mm -hmm. is the equivalent of like four games or something. Well, in normal baseball season, that's literally 14 games. Like, (laughs) yeah. And so, and so it's, it's kind of going off of, um, win percentage and, okay. uh, Kind I of think with, we should always do that with um, World Series it's pretty better. much coming up because they, they had to accelerate the season. Yeah, they, I know they cut it um, way down, but I yeah, didn't know if so, it was like because I know, like I said, hockey's like we're just doing it's basically playoffs. Here's all the teams. It's just a tournament. 
go. I didn't know how baseball was doing it exactly. Sort of, sort of the same, but they kind of wanted to get those. If it's going by and, percentages and then taking from there, that makes sense. And yeah, that, that's kind of what. It's, but then it also kind of breaks down to well, what if those teams that had to um, postpone several games, uh, yeah, but still had good win percentages, even though they didn't have to play that many games? So are they are they in it? Are they not in it? And um, in Trevor's vlogs, he kind of talks about that as as a player perspective, because he's like, look, we don't even know how this is going to work. We're just kind of going off a, yeah. a need to know basis. And then you had teams sitting out for the the social justice issues, which he takes a look into. Well, yeah. And and so it's 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 a neat look coming from an inside perspective, which is not seen a lot and it, it, it's just you know he he's a weird person trevor bauer is but he's you know he's a really good pitcher um he, he's just a weird individual but it's just well, kind of yeah. fun that's cool yeah all right yeah because i i heard some other sports are doing some bizarre things to kind of mitigate it but i didn't hear about baseball really because i don't like i said i don't follow baseball <laughs> most of the time most of the time all I ever hear about is basketball and them being weird and doing strange things and who knows. So I don't, I don't, they're confusing and I don't, <laughs> they have lots of issues currently happening. So I don't yeah. stay away from that one. Anyway, <clears throat> well, <laughs> and then and there's just LeBron James crying about things. <laughs> Shut up, LeBron. No one cares. Go away. <clears throat> I also don't like LeBron James for the record. Uh, like, <laughs> like it for a multitude of reasons. Take Take notes. Next episode, our this least not... favorite people anywhere. <laughs> this is also not a new phenomenon. This has been for like ever. But I know. Like... <laughs> I know. Yes, I <laughs> obviously. Oh yeah. Last sporting note. Uh because uh have you seen <laughs> this is a per Shayna, right? Uh because she is a wrestling enthusiast, right? Have you seen the new WWE wrestling, uh, what they've done now? No. Yo, it's crazy. They have converted an arena, right? Uh, they have filled it with LED screens. And it's all fans watching at home from webcams, watching live, and they're broadcasting them on these screens in the arena. That, that's kind of how they it's had to do it with, with no, the NBA. No, thank you. No, no, no. Um, because they're doing that little like um, little bubble thing that's all down in Disney World, where they built a basketball stadium and they put these screens around it, and you can yeah. pay to be a, a quote unquote fan on TV on TV. Yeah, um, it's similar to that. Because before they had just like they were in their own building and they just had other wrestlers and staff in the audience because yeah, they were yeah. already there. Right. Yeah. But they have built this crazy thing that has, it's like that. It's just like screens on screens. on screens. It's like, what in the world? That's is insane. That? It's kind of nuts. <laughs> so so they, can, you, can you apply to be, to watch? Yeah, I think or? you have to apply to be on there. And they've had some problems. Uh, some, there was a dude that like wore his clan outfit and one of the things and got caught on camera. Uh, what? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, dude, this is a fan at home, decided to do that. Uh, so, they banned him forever. Uh, they <laughs> uh, they're going through the monitoring process. And, like, random, like, another wrestler from another company was on there, like, last week. And people were like, uh, is that, is that kosher? Is that allowed? Okay. Like, does that... <laughs> What's contract say about that? I don't know. <laughs> he, can be, he can be a fan, can't he? he? Just, I guess so. But I think some people were like, well, that was weird. I don't know. <laughs> like, oh, hi. <laughs> so it's another step into bizarro land that is that. <laughs> is, that is 2020 as a whole. It's true. It's true. Okay, so got a challenge for next week. Apply for <laughs> WWE. I love this. This is good. This is going to be a good one. Very excited. I mean, 
for for baseball stadiums, you can pay to have like a life size cardboard cut out in the stand. Yeah, that, that's what reminded me of just bring that up because I saw that baseball just had cardboard cutouts of people in the stand. It look and that look that looks weird. Like yeah. <laughs> I rather just them play in the empty like hockey just has like covered the seats and it's just like a gray tarp or something. He's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> but like baseball you're like, that's unnerving. There's just <laughs> It looks like the old, like, uh, PlayStation games, right? Or like the Madden crowd, that, that, you know? That's what everyone like. on, on ESPN was talking about, that they were like, it, it's better if we pull on, like, the old NCAA uh, football games and just, yeah. you know, plaster people's like faces Madden on that. 98, right? That's what it looks like. <laughs> this flat, 2D Dead people. eyes everywhere. <laughs> right. That would not be okay. Could you imagine that at nighttime? <laughs> a night game? <laughs> like, ugh. Could you imagine after the lights are off, you're like walking around there with the cardboard cutouts nope. still in the nope. stadium? Nope. nope. Lights go out. Just run away. Just the security <laughs> lights on? Yeah. No. You run as fast as you can. <laughs> you, is that what, you think that's what the last guy out does? The guy that's the guy, the team is like closing up. They're like, all right, guys. Yeah, three, ready? Two. Yeah. <laughs> well, click, go! Don't look back. Just run like to the door. Six-year-old me running up from the basement while turning off the lights true. behind me runs out the door because <laughs> no, thank you. Because <laughs> you don't look at. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I bet that's what they do. <laughs> run, run! <laughs> the little yellow security jackets just running down the hallway, <laughs> screaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, just yeah. gotta get to the tunnel. And you can't see him anymore, so they don't have to run far. They don't have to yeah, like, run see, all the way to the gate. Out of I guess. Their, if they had eyesight, you just have to get out of there. <laughs> That's true. You have to break line good. of sight, right? And break line fine. of sight. Yeah, you're break good. Line of sight. You're, you'll be fine. Well, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. love you guys. Love you too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Talk again soon. All right. All right. Love you. Bye, dear. <laughs>